Welcome to The Shift Show with Adriana Bucci. Join me every week to learn all about narcissistic abuse recovery, healing from physical and emotional pain after the abuse, and everything else to do with toxic people and how they affect your physical, emotional, and mental health. And no, you are not the crazy one. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Let's get right to it. Welcome back to The Shift Show. Today's episode is going to be all about why narcissists view boundaries as a punishment. So, as you probably already know, narcissists are known for being self-absorbed and, you know, difficult to deal with, and this is very apparent and something you're probably very well aware of, especially when you are trying to set a boundary with a narcissist, right? It's like you've been walking on eggshells for a very long time. You finally mustered up the courage to, you know, set this boundary in the most polite, easy to understand, thoughtful way where, you know, they can't really argue with you and you hope that they're not going to retaliate so you're trying to very carefully choose your words and you know you've really been overthinking about it for weeks and weeks in advance you made a multiple pros and cons list you've questioned yourself you've questioned if you're being reasonable and finally you mustered up the courage and you went ahead and you set the boundary now The reasonable expectation is that they're going to be understanding because after all, you've included some very good reasons for your boundaries and you may have even provided some documented proof and evidence that not even a lawyer could really argue with that validates the reason for your boundary. And then you start to wonder after they respond, is this person fucking serious? Do they seriously just ask me why I'm punishing them? Were we both present for the same conversation? What is happening here? Oh shit, wait a minute. Maybe they're right. Maybe this boundary is too harsh. How familiar does that sound? Well, this is actually a classic manipulation tactic that narcissistic abusers use in order to trigger your repressed guilt. This puts you in that bamboozled state, which makes you easier to control because someone who is guilt feeling very guilty, even though they didn't commit some sort of heinous, disgusting crime that, you know, really ruined someone's life. That is what causes you to be easier to control when you're in that state. And of course, the narcissist continues to get their way. The boundary doesn't end up happening anymore. And we're going to unpack this manipulation tactic, how it works, and how you can stay grounded in reality and not fall for this classic trap that narcissists love to do anytime you set a boundary. Now, before we dive in, it's important to understand how a narcissist's mind works. So you need to know what their main motivation behind their abusive behavior is. And that motivation is to gain narcissistic supply from their target. What exactly is supply? Well, that's your emotional reaction, your attention, your engagement in those word salad conversations that lead to absolutely no resolution, but they go on and on and on for hours and you know, nothing gets solved. If anything, you're way more confused your time, your energy, resources, whatever it is that they want to get out of you, that is an energetic commitment because if you've ever dealt with a narcissist, it is freaking exhausting, right? So that's a really great red flag to be aware of to know if you're actually giving the narcissist supply, right? And of course, someone who's exhausted is also easier to control, so just something to keep in mind. So when you set a boundary with a narcissist, guess what that means for them? That means they get less access to you. And that also means they get less access to the supply that you've been unwittingly providing them with. 
So the more that you really wrap your head around the fact that supply is literally all it's about with narcissists, the more that you can continue expecting the exact same patterns of abusive behavior to play out as, you know, they really become very predictable once you know what to look out for, right? And it's really just the love bomb devalue discard cycle. Sometimes it's love bomb devalue over and over and over again and they don't discard it makes it really doesn't matter at the end of the day everything that they do is done for the purpose of gaining supply all right and again you reacting emotionally so when you take away the supply right you're not giving them that energetic reaction that emotional reaction that response you're not necessarily praising them either or giving them attention right because that's really all it's about they just want attention they want all eyes on them they want to feel significant they want to feel important at the end of the day and the more that they have people paying attention to them whether it's good attention or bad attention it really doesn't matter that's what they want it's really messed up right and it's just that that's just how they are it's like when you really like spell it out like that every time i talk about supply i'm just like that's it's just so dumb <laughs> like it is the dumbest thing to be your life goal to get supply from other people but hey what do i know right <laughs> that's just me i'm just one of many many people who has unfortunately been through this kind of crap but i'm super stoked that i get to talk about this now and share all the knowledge that i continue to get about this and you know it just people need to know about this stuff <laughs> So let's talk about narcissists and boundaries, how they view boundaries and why they see them as a punishment, which I'm sure at this point, it's probably starting to come together that they feel like it's a punishment because they feel entitled to supply, right? So we'll get into this. So narcissists treat boundaries as, as if they're like a challenge to overcome right? It's like, oh, they think it's a game, you know, like, oh, they don't, they don't like to be told no. And they're going to turn your no into a yes at any cost. They will do any manipulation tactic to get their way. Even if your request for the boundary is completely reasonable and, you know, like, let's just use an example of, let's say you don't want them to wake you up at three o'clock in the morning to discuss the problems that you tried to already talk to them about during the day, or you know, you would prefer it if they didn't scream at you anymore for no reason. It really doesn't matter what your boundary is. It's probably a very reasonable one. And now they see it as you just disagreed with them, right? You pressed their shame. There's the shame rage cycle. Anytime that you call them out, you point out reality, you just, you know, say something that's honest that pisses them off and so they flip the shame into rage right so just just something to understand so basically they see your no as a punishment right they can't get that supply from you at three o'clock in the morning anymore right and what a great time to terrorize somebody you're half asleep you're in dreamland and now this person's just like up your ass, like just bitching at you about this random thing that has nothing to do with anything. And you just want to go back to sleep. So you're probably going to say whatever to just shut them up and go to bed. And then, you know, it just becomes this whole thing. And now they can't do that to you anymore. And they feel like they're not allowed to wake you up to start a fight anymore. And, you know, when, when you hear it just like spelled out like this, it really shows you how ridiculously unreasonable narcissists are, right? And I don't know, I mean, to anyone who's never dealt with a narcissist, you're probably like, who does that? Who wakes someone up at 3 a.m.? And obviously you've never dealt with a narcissist before if uh, this is shocking to you. So this is absolutely something that they do. They do a lot of random crap to really get supply from their targets. Let's uh, use another example 
about a boundary. So let's say you have a narcissistic mother and she starts sharing details about your personal life to whoever will listen so that, you know, they can gossip. She gets supply from the people that she's gossiping about you too. And then she gets supply from you when you find out about it and you're pissed off about it. You confront her about it, right? Like it's just all the attentions on her, right? It doesn't matter what it's about. <laughs> it just matters the fact that people are paying attention to her and what she has to say, and it makes her feel relevant. So you go ahead and you try to set that very reasonable boundary with your narcissistic mother, and you ask her to just, you know, not do that anymore. It's really none of her friend's business or whoever she's talking to, whether it's your random relatives, her coworkers, whoever will listen, whoever it is that she is telling about your life's business and you know, if she continues to do this, you're going to stop sharing things with her. That's pretty reasonable, don't you think? However, a narcissistic mother will then flip it in whichever way is convenient for them. So whatever examples I provide here may not necessarily be exactly what you've gone through, but you can put the pieces together, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they flip it onto you. They make you the bad guy. They become the victim. So she might do something like going on and on and on about how she only cares about your well-being and she has no one else to talk to and how could you punish her like this? She might even go ahead and deny everything and then accuse you of making things up just to punish her. Regardless of what exact words are said, in this example, she has made herself a victim and then she has made you the aggressor. This is called DARVO, deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. You can Google it if you want some more information on that. So what's more, what's important to understand in the two examples I provided here is that nobody in their right mind would think it's reasonable to fight against such basic human decency things that are being requested here, okay? Like it's not, you're not asking for a lot when you ask someone to like not talk shit behind your back, right? You're not asking for a lot when you ask somebody to not wake you up at three o'clock in the morning to discuss like random issues that should be discussed during the day, right? Nobody is entitled to wake you up just for the sake of arguing because they need to be entertained by the drama right then and there. Nobody is entitled to information about your personal life. Even if that person is your mother, like you don't have to share everything with your family just because family, because you don't have to, like they're not entitled to any information from you. And this is what narcissists want. They want information and any information that you give them, they're gonna use it against you as a way to try and gain supply, right? So it's really not unreasonable to basically expect an adult to behave like an adult, but narcissists, while they may be stuck in an adult body, they have the emotional maturity of a toddler. And I really feel like I'm being mean towards toddlers when I'm saying that because I feel like you know, I don't really know any toddlers, I don't really hang out with them, but I feel like they've got, they've got their shit together a little bit more than narcissists, so no offense to them. Um, so narcissists really do feel entitled to, to getting supply from you at the end of the day. And when you're setting boundaries, you are taking away their entitled privileges, right? Quote unquote privileges. The narcissist's sense of entitlement isn't just going to go away because, you know, you're dealing with a narcissist. They do not change, right? And, you know, there's some people who think that they do. Bless them. You know, they can keep wasting their time. But at this point, you know, when you've dealt with the same exact patterns over and over again and the person doesn't change, like you got to start believing that they're not going to change and, you know, focus on yourself and your healing journey rather than this person who's literally just trying to sabotage you because they want you to react and they want supply and supply is just, you know, such a valuable currency, apparently. It's ridiculous. So they're going to, they're going to act some, sometimes when you do set a boundary, they're going to act as if you're punishing them and the purpose of them doing that is to guilt you into not taking away what they feel entitled to. So they might convey this in the form of a guilt trip. So they're gonna go ahead and justify their behavior by inducing the feeling of guilt within you by manipulating your empathy. So a few examples of what this might sound like. 
I was only trying to work things out. Why does it matter that it was 3 a.m.? Don't you care about the relationship? Or they might say something as simple as, how could you do this to me? And then, you know, you're racking your brain like, what did I do here? (laughs) I thought I was the one who was like having every right to set a boundary. And then that confuses you, right? Because the guilt comes up. Or they might say something like, I can't believe you're being so harsh. You're not the same understanding person that I thought I knew, right? And I could go on and on, but I think at this point you get the idea of what a guilt trip would sound like. And so what happens when they guilt trip you? So what you need to understand is that guilt is one of those emotions that narcissists love to use against their targets. And they installed that button, that guilt button into your subconscious through the years of manipulation. So they know exactly how to push that button to make you feel guilty just by saying a few magic words that they know will trigger you. And when you feel guilty, you might start to believe the feeling of guilt. And this is why it's so important to understand that feelings are not facts. Because what the emotion of guilt starts to tell you is that, you know, things like you're genuinely a bad person. You might believe that you overreacted and the original issue wasn't such a big deal after all. And it'll probably just be better if you just sort of cave into the demands of the narcissist and play nice because you don't want to rock the boat anymore and maybe you were being unreasonable. You might believe that this type of behavior is normal and acceptable. You might believe that there is something wrong with you and that you're the one who has to do all the work to make things better. Otherwise, you're just this heartless monster who doesn't care and you might as well just admit yourself to a jail and request a life sentence because you're just such a horrible person, right? That's what guilt does to your mind. And the fact of the matter is none of that shit is true, but it feels true because the narcissist is manipulating you. And they have conditioned you over a long period of time via this type of abuse to have you thinking that way. So let's talk very quickly about how a normal person would react to a boundary just so you can kind of get an idea on how normal people behave. Because I know a lot of us as survivors, we end up realizing we're actually surrounded by narcissists. Um, That is something that happened for myself when I first started going down the rabbit hole. I didn't realize, wow, is anyone normal? (laughs) Like, is anyone not a narcissist? What is this all about? But, you know, it's really because of the conditioning that I went through in my childhood from being raised by a narcissistic mother that I just assumed that, like, this is just normal behavior. This is how people are until I learned that It's in fact not normal whatsoever. So that took quite a bit of work to like decondition my brain from believing that that's how it's supposed to be. But there is hope you absolutely can undo that conditioning. It's not gonna be an overnight process, but it is possible. So if I can provide any hope that it's possible, I'm gonna keep doing that. So let's just use that same example of the mother who overshares details about their adult child's life to whoever will listen, okay? So let's say a normal parent who didn't intend to harm their adult child or, you know, to get supply from them and the people engaged in the gossip supply from them too, they would apologize and they would ensure that this never happens again. And guess what else? They would actually go ahead and follow through with it never happening again. And then, you know, it's all good. It's all, we're all good. Everything's understood. The relationship between the parent and the adult child is now stronger because guess what? Effective communication and understanding happened. But honestly, quite frankly, this whole scenario that is described in this example would probably never really happen to begin with if it was a normal, healthy mother and not a narcissistic mother or parent. It can be any, any narcissistic parent does the same shit. So it would really never have happened to begin with because it's just not something that normal people who care about people do, you know? And so a narcissistic parent, on the other hand, would potentially pretend to apologize and they might say that it'll never happen again, but it always does happen again, right? Because narcissists love to say things, but the things that they say are completely irrelevant. So 
try here's here's a quick reframe that i'm just making up on the spot so anytime you find yourself believing what the narcissist says about you remember how many promises they have not kept and try and think about the words that they say as just noise coming out of their mouth because that's really what it is they're completely full of shit what they say is meant to trigger or gain your trust right so if they're gonna say something to you to gain your trust so that you keep sharing information with them, they're gonna do that. Or they're gonna say something else in order to devalue you and make you feel like shit about yourself so that you're easier to control. And then with, if they feel like you're slipping away, they're gonna love bomb you again. So it's just really important to be aware of this sort of dynamic. And you know, they will just say these things like, okay, it's never gonna happen again, but then it does, but they're only saying it so that the adult child will trust them and then continue to supply them with information about their life. And then of course, the behavior of gossiping with whoever's gonna listen. And then of course, getting supply from those people too in the process would continue. Another tactic that a narcissistic parent might go with is asking you why you didn't say something sooner, right? Like, I didn't know this was an issue. Why didn't you tell me the first time five years ago when it happened? And then you're caught off guard by this absolutely stupidly ridiculous question. And that is when they go in for the attack and then they let you know why you're understanding incorrectly or you don't know what you're talking about. You're being dramatic, blah, 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 blah. And they do this to distract you from the original issue so that you start to wonder what is wrong with you. And then the narcissistic parent ends up evading accountability altogether because you're not even focused on what the original issue was. You're focused on trying not to be such a dramatic person anymore. And that's all thanks to them manipulating you. So what can you do if the narcissist in your life says you are punishing them when you set a boundary? So something I wanna emphasize, and it's something that I posted on my Instagram yesterday. Um, So check out the post is that less is more, okay? The less things you say to the narcissist, the less words you use, the less you interact with this person, the better. I know complete elimination of contact is not possible in all cases, but you can control the number of words that come out of your mouth to this person. You can control the amount of emotion that comes out of you when you're talking to this person. And it's hard. It's really hard because sometimes you're just so overwhelmed and you just want to prove your point. But what you have to understand with a narcissist is that there's no point in even talking or even trying to justify anything because they just want supply from you. So justifying your boundary, explaining yourself, proving that you're not a bad person is only going to serve as supply and you're going to be tired because giving a narcissist supply is exhausting, okay? At the end of the day, logic, facts, and reality do not matter to a narcissist. What matters to them is that they are being supplied by you at the expense of your mental health, at the expense of your emotional health. Sometimes this can, you know, with the mind-body connection, which I've talked about a lot on this podcast, where, you know, repressed emotions manifest as physical symptoms, pain, chronic pain, right? Those wacky symptoms that you keep going to the doctor they run all your tests everything comes out normal but you know you you want to figure out what's wrong with you but really nothing's wrong with you but you're just feeling all these horrible symptoms that is part of emotional repression and it can also of course impact your physical health so if you know anything about my story you know i had severe chronic pain for four years i did have symptoms like random symptoms of anything and everything throughout my whole life Um, but you know, that breaking point of the chronic pain, it really accumulated from 2015 to 2019 and it was just a complete shit show. There's a podcast episode about it somewhere in my podcast. So feel free to go through that. Um, but you know, it's really at the expense of your mental, emotional, and even your physical health. It is simply not worth wasting any more time and energy trying to prove yourself to this person. Okay. It doesn't matter what you say. If they say, oh my God, you're punishing me, just be like, all right, cool, I'm an asshole, whatever, and walk away. Like, just end the conversation. If it's on the phone, hang up. 
let them call you back and don't answer the phone. Let them be unhinged, right? They're going to go for on and on and on calling your phone. Then they'll go on like a blocked number calling your phone. Don't answer it because they just want you to react. Any little bit of attention you give them in one of their little tantrums, they're just going to like run with it and get even more unhinged. So, you know, disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. If your physical safety is ever at risk, you that's a law enforcement thing. Um, and you want to make sure that your physical safety is always taken care of. Uh, that's not something that any podcast or coach can really help you with. Um, so just be mindful of that if, you know, they can somehow sometimes get like really unhinged to the point where they get violent and that's something that you really like need to get the legal system involved. I mean, I'm not even going to talk about that because that's just a completely separate thing that I can't do justice to. (laughs) All right. So it's really just not worth wasting any time, right? If it's like a text message conversation that you're having with this person, just stop answering, right? Let them think that they're being punished. Let them go cry about it. You don't have to participate in their pity party. You're not responsible for their emotions, right? The only person who is responsible for their own emotions is that person, right? So the same way that You are the one who's responsible for your own emotions is the same way that the narcissist is responsible for their emotions. And they're just having a temper tantrum in order to make you feel bad about setting the boundary. And you don't have to entertain that shit. Okay? Let them think what they want. People think things all the time. Just because somebody thinks something, it doesn't mean it's true. Okay? You're not going to get into legal trouble over setting a boundary. Okay? And if there is a risk for that, you need to talk to a lawyer. Okay? (laughs) Okay? So it's really just not worth wasting the time or the energy. And if you're like engaging with this person in person, like face to face, just walk away, leave the room, right? Again, if they are threatening your physical safety, that's a law enforcement thing. Let them, let them be a thunder cloud of misery. Let them say whatever they want to say, whatever words come out of their mouth are calculated in order to trigger you into responding and reacting. You don't need to, okay? Because that's how they feel like they're in control over you. That's the game. And you need to be very aware of that. And you need to also understand that your boundaries are very reasonable. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to justify it. They're an adult. They need to figure their shit out, okay? So that is it for today's episode. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has uh, given you some aha moments. I'll also share that I, if you want to have some additional guidance on setting boundaries with the narcissist in your life, I have created a free boundaries masterclass. I will share the link in the description of the episode here so you have easy access to it. It is a 45 minute long training. I know I went a little bit overkill with it, but... It's just important to have this information out there because the boundary setting advice that is really out there, that's like the mainstream stuff. When you Google, how do you set a boundary? They'll, they'll give you like decent advice that works with like normal, healthy people, but that's advice that's not going to work with a narcissistic abuser. And so you want to avoid certain mistakes so the masterclass is all about the three mistakes to avoid when it comes to setting boundary with a narc and it will help you to kind of figure out how to implement those boundaries and just a spoiler alert some boundaries you don't even need to announce so if you are gray rocking them you don't need to tell them that you're gray rocking them you just go ahead and gray rock them If you are going low contact, you don't need to tell them that because you know what they're going to do when you tell them that and you share that information, they're going to take the information and weaponize it against you. So as long as you're aware of what to be prepared for, you know, you can say whatever you want to them at the end of the day. I can't tell you how to live your life, but just know what to expect and just know when to give up, right? Because honestly, like there's so much power in giving up and you're not giving up on yourself when you give up on the narc and there's it's it's really 
you don't want to waste time, <laughs> right? Time is a precious thing that we don't get back. So again, I'll post that link to the free boundaries masterclass and uh, I will end this episode here. I hope this has been helpful. And if uh, you know, you're interested in working with me, I do offer a community membership. It's on its own app. It's super awesome. I'll share the link to that as well. You can get started for less than a dollar a day. So super affordable, super awesome space, lots of amazing survivors, all connecting and live events and all that fun stuff. So I'll put the link to that as well. And I will end this episode here. So I will see you next week. I do plan on being more consistent with this podcast. It was like the perfect shit storm of everything the past couple of weeks but I am hopefully back on track and uh, I'll see you very soon right here on the shift show enjoy the rest of your day bye